Brand new designs are up on the Edge Redbubble, werewolves, spiders, FedEx amphibians, protocrocs, and more. Go check out the Redbubble with links in the description and comment section below. The largest insects today pale in comparison to those of the past. But even saying that, there are plenty alive today that reach dimensions that plenty of extinct insects reached. Those giant millipedes, griffin flies, and arachnids of the Carboniferous can be seen as flukes. Dinosaurs were living with insects that got as big as they do today, and just one of the largest ones happens to be one of, if not the largest beetle on the planet. Meet the Titan Beetle, Titanus giganteus. This nasty bugger comes from the steaming, humid rainforests of the Amazon, ranging from Colombia to Venezuela to Ecuador and Peru to the Guyanas and North Brazil. It's been known to science for 300 plus years, as the great naturalist Carl Linnaeus described the thing all the way back in 1771. Linnaeus being the Swedish botanist, zoologist, taxonomist, and physician who came up with the binomial classification of living things and is therefore considered the father of modern taxonomy. Despite being known for so long, the titan beetle has evaded the scientific papers in the precise nature of its inner bits, its sex life, its larval stage, and much more. This enormous longhorn beetle is somewhat of a mystery. But how enormous of a beetle? Well, not to emasculate the majority of viewers, but the largest known titan beetles have been measured from mandible to anus at 6.6 .6 inches, 16.7 centimeters. According to David Attenborough, in a documentary which featured a segment about this enormous invertebrate, there may even be some at 7 inches, 17.8 centimeters. The champion is 7 inches long from the tip of the mandibles abdomen. When they have been captured, their wingspan has been measured at around 9.8 inches, 24 centimeters. Reverend John George Wood was an English writer who popularized natural history through his writings in the mid to late 1800s. He wrote of some particularly large individuals of this beetle in his 1874 book, Insects Abroad. As he wrote his chapter about the family of beetles to which the titan belongs, Prionanae, he reportedly had a 9-inch, 22-centimeter specimen. If this specimen was truly this long, and the existence of such a behemoth could be proven, then the title of largest living insect would be easily won. The thing that's weird here is that Wood didn't over-exaggerate the sizes of other insects he collected and recorded in his book. For example, he noted a goliath beetle at 4 inches long by 2 inches wide. That's well within the known size range for these guys. It is possible he measured the creepy crawly by including the antennae, but that would also be weird as they have characteristically rigid antennae that bend sideways and backwards. It also remains a possibility that 9 inches is simply a typo and he meant 6 inches, but then he likely wouldn't have gone on to write how he wished to have the bug engraved into the book but couldn't because the book was literally too small, that book being 4 by 6 inches. So it remains possible that there are 9-inch cryptic titan beetles out there, but they've yet to be reliably measured and thrown into the literature for good measure. Adults have a long, almond-like, flat body with a very short thorax. The head has a huge pair of compound eyes. The damn things look like dust goggles. Dissection of the eyes found that they are of the opposition type. This is the type of compound eye usually found in diurnal, or dayactive insects. Yet, adult males are usually seen at night flying around. That's when most are captured. One of many curious aspects of these hulking beasts. The noggin is capped by the most wicked pair of toenail clippers you've ever seen. They have been reported to slice straight through a pencil and shred human skin pretty easily. They have huge, light tan colored pads on their feet for getting a good grip on leaves and tree trunks and find their way around with their long, whiskery antennae, which, like their entire bodies, are reinforced by a harder-than-usual cuticle. They start off as a black color near the front of their bodies, and fade into a cherry wood, brownish red, near their rear. Males are the most well understood, as they are easily captured, but those females that have been captured or observed are much smaller than the males. 
not much else is known about the sexual dimorphism of this species. Here's the weird and mysterious thing about these mammoth beetles. No one knows anything about their larval stage. Like I said before, males are the ones most often collected. This is twofold. They are bigger than females and therefore offer a more impressive prize, and they are attracted to 2000 watt light traps while the females are not. Both males and females have those formidable mandibles, but don't really use them to slice through hapless mini-monsters nor to shred through leaf litter. They don't eat. The reason they don't bother with eating is that they only live 3-4 to four weeks. Their adult stage is usually only for finding a hot and hunky mate and boning. If you were hoping to see what a bouncing baby titan beetle looks like, well, so am I. No one knows what the grubs of these suckers look like they've yet to be found. A good speculative explanation as to why this is has to do with what the beetle babies eat. The vast majority of the larvae of the family to which the titan belongs are borers. They only eat the wood of trees that are being digested by fungi. So it's possible that field biologists have already seen titan beetle larvae, but haven't differentiated them from the larvae of other wood-eating beetles. Since beetle grubs tend not to differ much in appearance, I think it wouldn't be totally out of left field to assume a baby titan would look rather grubby. Some dissections have been done on captured adult male titans, which have revealed some digested wood bits in their guts. The researchers involved in that dissection suggested that the stuff in the gut was just residual fuel left over from the metamorphosis from grub to beetle. Adults have been known to take water, so it remains a possibility that they will eat and that some of that gut mulch was consumed as an adult. More research into this area is needed to get a more solid answer. Titans are intimidating insects. Since they don't use those mandibles for munching, they use them in defense on top of the good old fashioned hiss. They have been known to swing their whole bodies and heads around at field biologists and approach with full chad energy, gnashing their finger cutters and swatting their antennae around. I wonder if they'd make good eating fried up or grilled with seasonings and rice. What do you think? The 3D models in this video were made by Kuzim, or Adam Midzuk, and the animations were made by Tyler Addison. Their socials will be included in the description and the comment section below. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, hit the bell icon for updates, like this video, and drop a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Special thanks goes to my elephant tier patrons, Thea Svensson, Staniforth Hopkins, Dinosaur, Chris Frampton, Biotaverse, Arda Bayer, and Christoph Hubbinger. As well as my Tyrannosaur patrons, Iron Bladesman, Henry Brennan, Danny Van Heck, and Dana Manchester.